Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a highly anticipated video, at least highly anticipated for me, because I've been playing with this puppy for quite some time now and I am ready to give you my thoughts on this palette, swatch it for you, show you some other palettes in my collection that remind me of this palette. So if you're interested in finding out more about the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette, just keep watching. Okay, so if you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably know my little crusade to find this palette. If you don't, add me. It's Karen Harris Makeup, and I always have Instagram stories on there. I don't really use Snapchat. I do have an account, but I just feel like I want to stick to the social media that I'm on all the time, and it's usually Instagram. I also have a Facebook page if you want to check that out. Um, but mostly you can find me on Instagram and YouTube. Those are my two favorite social medias. Um, and also if you haven't subscribed to my channel, there's a red button down below. Go ahead and click that. It really helps my channel out every time you subscribe. And also if you give it a thumbs up, I know to keep making these videos. On my Instagram stories, I was stocking this palette. I was asking you guys to let me know when it went in stock. I had notifications on for Beautylish, Sephora, Natasha Denona. Anywhere I could think of that I could get an alert to make sure I was on it. So I didn't pick it up the first time it launched. I missed the second relaunch and then I got it on the third launch um, and that was through Sephora. Beautylish has not restocked. I think they will be restocking sometime in the summer. Um, also yesterday I believe Natasha and Dodona just announced that this palette is going to be made permanent. So initially it was limited edition. Now it's going to be permanent and she kind of just said that she wanted to make it available because she keeps getting hundreds and hundreds of messages and tweets and things like that of people wanting this palette. Now that is a whole nother story unto itself. Could it be that they reduce supply so there's more demand? I can see that being the case because it happened to me. Um, I'm not a big Natasha Denona fan. If you guys have been with me for a long time, I reviewed one of her five pan palettes um, like a year or two ago when her brand just started becoming popular. I was so, so curious because there were so many influencers talking about her eyeshadow palettes and then those big eyeshadow palettes that are about $285 or $58, something in the almost $300 range. Everyone was talking about them, they were receiving them in PR, and everyone was hyping up her brand, so I was so curious and I picked this up. So I wasn't a big fan of hers at all, but I skipped out on most of her launches. I don't buy any of her makeup. The only thing I own is this one and now the Sunset Palette. Something about the shades in the Sunset Palette really spoke to me. I love warm shades. I'm gonna show you some of the palettes in my collection that remind me of the Natasha Denona palette some that you might be able to use as dupes. Um, so you don't have to go out and buy this $129 palette. But I honestly can see where makeup brands have evolved and they're smart and they know how to reduce and restrict supply so that the demand and the hype is just, you know, phenomenal. I just um, don't see Natasha Denona doing that very often, but I can see where with the Sunset Palette it was extremely hard to get a hold of and then it sold out and then people were just like losing their minds and I was one of those people I was commenting um you know anywhere I could to you know see if I could get a date of a you know restock and things like that so definitely it's something to think about um they might be trying to create more and more hype but now it is going to be made permanent so if you haven't gotten your hands on the palette yet Fear not, there is still hope for all of you out there. Now, just a little bit of background information. Um, again, this is the Sunset Palette. It's $129. It's out of stock everywhere. Um, it's not available on Sephora, Beautylish, or Natasha Denona's website. Um, it contains 15 eyeshadows, and these are really, really quite big pans. Um, the 15 shadows each are 0.08 ounces and it gives you 2.5 grams of product. Um, now let's talk about the packaging really quick. It's like a leather, leathery, uh, full leather feeling um, packaging and it's this cool bronzy shade. Um, the name of the palette is on the front here and it also says Natasha Denona. And then it's um, nice, it's magnetic. It kind of reminds me of the Inglot palettes. 
I've never actually held those but for the most part it feels very well made and then these are the shadows and then on the back here it does say this is a 24 month shelf life it is made in Italy the shade names are on this plastic flap which is nice because it also keeps it from messing up the mirror there is a little mirror in here I still have the plastic on it because I don't typically use the mirrors in my palettes and then this is the box it came in. It's just a very simple white box. It has all the ingredients on the back here and it talks about all the shadows and what the ingredients are. I wouldn't say it's $129 worth of nice, but it's a uh, sleek. I think you can travel well with it. I can see it, you know, lasting very well compared to this guy. Now this is her five pan shadows. These aren't cheap either. These are like 50 something dollars. Now on the back here, it says that it's a six month shelf life. So I'm thinking that the Natasha Denona brand has really evolved in the last couple of years and they reformulated where their palettes and shadows are better quality and last longer because I hated this palette. I still do. It's a shimmery nightmare. Um, and it's just like, like, it's not packed very well so I dropped it this white one it's pretty shattered there's a lot of product in there but I just really don't like these eyeshadows it contains four formulas there's mattes duochromes metallic and then something called chroma crystal finishes most of them have that chroma crystal finish these are colors inspired by the sunset which I definitely think she nailed it contains warm browns, burnt oranges, reds, golds, bronzy shades, and yellow shades. I mean, there's one yellow shade. There's a few duochromes. Um, again, this palette is cruelty-free and talc-free. So if that's something that's important to you, you know, know that the, it is cruelty-free. So now I'm going to go ahead and swatch all the shadows. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go on to the swatch. Okay, guys. So I'm just going to um, swatch on my hand here. So the first shade is going to be Atmosphere, and this is a metallic rose bronze shade, and I just did one swipe straight across. Let me just blend it a little bit. So there is the shade Atmosphere. Next shade is called Sinai. Sinai. This is what it is, and it's a matte burn terracotta shade. Next shade is called Ice Cold, and Ice Cold is a cork. Chroma Sheer Cream with Gold Sparkle. Next shade is called Mandarin and it's a beautiful duochrome orangey yellow shade. And then the last shade in the first row is called Bronze Age and it's a Chroma Crystal Light Copper. So there is the first row of swatches. Okay, so this is the second row. The first shade is called Volcano which is this dark matte brown shade with a hint of mauve. Next shade is a Aubedi. I don't know how to say that. That's a Chroma Crystal Warm Gold. That's this one. Next shade is Horizon, which is a matte warm orange shade. Next shade is Sun Dazed, and that's a Chroma Crystal Gold. And then the last shade is Terra, which is a matte terracotta. So there they are. As you can see, the shimmers, or maybe you can't, but the shimmers are very flaky. They remind me almost of like gold flakes. So they don't like blend smoothly onto the skin. They're very dusty. Do you see that? So I don't know. I compared this palette last night on my Instagram stories to the Magic palette by Juvia's Place. And I wish all of you could have seen that. I think I'll do some swatch comparisons on this video as well. But you could just see like flex on the um, on the you could just see flex on the sunset palette, but the Juvia's Place shadows just like were so smooth and soft. So I don't know why that is. Um, but we'll talk about that more later. Let me finish the swatches. Okay, so this is the last row. First shade is called Bermuda. And this is a matte pastel peachy nude. It's a beautiful brow bone highlight. I really like using that. Morgan uh, is the next shade. And that is a duochrome red with gold. And it's a beautiful shade. Next is Pangene or Pongeen. It's a matte red. 
Next is Igneous. Sorry, Igneous is a matte deep brown. And then the last shade is Soul, which is a matte warm yellow. So I'm gonna swatch those right here. I mean, this palette swatches beautifully on the hands. I definitely am gonna give it credit for that. The swatches are amazing. I think they're opaque. I just did like one swipe and then I like blended it out. So I haven't been like trying to build them up or anything like that. So based off of just looking at the swatches, I think the palette is 100% beautiful. Okay guys, so now that you've seen the swatches, let's talk a bit about the pros and cons of the palette. Overall, I do think this palette is original enough to stand out on its own. The cons are really the price for me. I think Natasha Denona is kind of in a league of her own. I don't know how she can justify the price she charges. Um, I highly doubt these shadows cost this much to make and I do understand everyone has to have their coin but there really is no other eyeshadow palettes that I know of that cost as much as hers do. Um, and I just think that, you know, with brands like Chanel and like Armani, all the high-end beauty brands, they have that exclusivity that they kind of place their products in that category where they are almost like unattainable on that high end and uh, people pay for that exclusivity. Um, they are buying that brand name and they're buying something that you know not everyone is allowed to have because of financial reasons just like you know not all of us can afford um, Louis Vuitton bags and some of us can't afford Michael Kors or Kate Spade so there's different tiers like for somebody they might just want to buy a Target a purse at Target and that's totally fine that's what they can afford um, so I don't know how Natasha Denona justifies being in that like very exclusive like high price level but then like people are, like me have this like need to buy more so then we're like I'm gonna I'm gonna put $129 towards a palette like why for what you know and <laughs> so that's like my biggest con is the price I don't think the performance of the palette justifies the price tag especially once I show you some of the dupes not dupes but like palettes I have in my collection that I feel like are just the same, just as good or even better. So um, let's get into that really quick. So some palettes that I have, I don't actually love, but I, you know, it's very similar, like this one. This is the Huda Beauty Rose Gold Textured Palette, whatever. And I mean, I see a ton of similarities between these two palettes. This one is um, a more expensive palette as well. And it's definitely not one of my favorites. But her textured shadows remind me a lot of the Natasha Denona shadows. They're very flaky. Um, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but there's almost like flex in these shadows. So they recommend that you use your finger. But honestly, like I don't have time to sit there and pat eyeshadow on my lids. It's a very messy process. I'm wearing the Natasha Denona palette on my lids today, and I wore this look to work, and although it's beautiful, um, it was just such a pain in the ass because I had to sit there and tap on this gold shade, which is a, a body or whatever, the gold shade from the palette, and I was like tapping it on my eyelid. I was using my pointer finger, which is too big, so then it got like all the way down here, and then I had to like wipe that down you know, do my foundation, like, I don't have time for that, and I just feel like I should be able to use a brush, and especially if you have fake nails or you wear, ha wear acrylic nails, you can't use your fingers to do eyeshadow, so if it doesn't perform as well with your brushes as it does with your fingers, is it really worth that price tag? So I'm going to just show you guys what I'm talking about, so let me just grab, like, this is a Morphe m224 this is what i typically use in my shadows so i'm going to grab this um shade which is a gold called sundays and so here's like the regular swatches and i'm just going to swatch this on my hand do you guys see that there's like no pigmentation even though this is a finger swatch this is what i get with my brush and it's not even opaque it just is a little bit of gold and i don't have time for that i really don't so that's what's disappointing about this palette is it takes a lot of work 
and I'm just not into that. Let me, I'm going to swatch a gold from each of these palettes. So I'm just going to use the same brush, uh, but let me try Bliss. Now again, I don't like this palette. It doesn't pick up anything because those textured shadows, they recommend using your finger. So that's the shade from now the Huda palette, and you can't see that either because it's recommended that you use your fingers, and I just don't care for that. I'm sorry, I just don't. Another palette that reminds me a lot of the Natasha Denona palette is uh, the Modern Renaissance palette, and this is mostly for the matte shades. Um, I mean, the Modern Renaissance palette was the palette that started it all, but I think this is an awesome palette if you're looking for those sunset shades. I think you can make it work with a more affordable palette like the Modern Renaissance palette. Here's another good dupe. This is the Violet Voss Ride or Die palette. Honestly, this palette doesn't get enough love for me. It is such an amazing palette. I have a review on this. I will link it up in the cards if you're interested. Another good one is the Holy Grail palette by Violet Voss. Um, I think this is very similar to the Natasha Denona palette. I mean, it doesn't have a yellow shade, but I mean, yellow is a hard color to pull off. I'm not saying that to be a B by any means, but it really is. I have a friend who's very, very light skin, and I gave her a yellow shade, and she's like, that's going to make me look like I have jaundice, and she might be right. It may make you look like you have jaundice, so you don't really need the yellow. It is one of the more unique shades, but you can definitely buy a yellow, even in a single, like MAC has a really good yellow, ColourPop has a yellow, um, Makeup Geek has, I'm sure, a yellow somewhere in their lineup. Here's another palette that I think it's comparable with. This is the 35R palette by Morphe. Some people don't like Morphe, that's okay. I think their price is good, so... And I, I've had really good luck with their quality as well, so... And then this is the OG Sunset palette of all Sunset palettes. This is the Morphe 35O. Again, it doesn't have a yellow shade, but I think if you're on a budget, you can achieve very similar looks with that palette as well. So, so this is the one I was comparing it to last night. This is the uh, Magic palette by Juvia's Place, and this is new, um, even newer than the Sunset palette. And I was just doing some like comparison swatches, and I just found the formula to be so much better on the Juvia's Place palette. So let me show you. I'm just going to swatch the two gold shades. If you can see, this one is the Juvia's Place palette um, swatch, and then this is the Natasha Denona swatch. And I can just see flex, and that translates to um, fallout, which is a pain in the ass when you're trying to get ready. So here are both of them swatch. They swatch beautifully. I mean like liquid gold, but I've just experienced a lot of fallout with the Natasha Denona shade. So I just wanted to, you know, put that out there for you guys. Take it as you will. Take it with a grain of salt. This is just my opinion. Um, so you don't have to believe me, but I just think there are a lot of alternates to the Natasha Denona Sunset palette. Okay guys, so do I think this palette is a must-have? Definitely not. I think it's very beautiful. I love the concept. I love the shades. I just think that for the price tag, the formula is just not my favorite. Um, it's very dusty. It's very fallouty. It's just a pain in the ass. Like I did the same look yesterday, and I didn't do my lid shade with uh, my finger, and the pigmentation was not as bright as it is today. Keep in mind, I've had this makeup on for about eight to eight plus hours today. So I wanted to, you know, be real with you guys. Um, I have a real job. This YouTube thing is something I do for fun on the side. And if you're a real person like me and you're buying this to wear to your day job and you don't have a lot of time in the morning, I just wouldn't recommend this because you do need to spend a lot of time with this palette. Um, if you get this, is this going to be completely unusable and useless? No. But who has $129 to put, to put towards something that doesn't work every single time? And the shadows cause fallout and things like that. So overall, I don't think this is a must-have. I think save your money, um, spend it on something else, spend it on all the other palettes I showed you, except except for the Huda Beauty palette because that palette sucks. Um, I really hate that palette. 
Um, but you know, sometimes you just need to try things out on your own and have your own opinion. But if you guys have tried this palette, can you leave me in the comments whether you like this palette? I'm just so, so curious to hear what other people think. I've heard so many people rave about these shadows, but every once in a while I see a person out there that's like, you know, feels the same way as I do. So I would love to talk to you. Um, you know, let me know if you guys agree with me or disagree with me and why. Um, that would be really, really exciting to talk to some of you and hear your thoughts on this $129 eyeshadow palette. I should also mention this is the most expensive eyeshadow palette I have. It might be the most expensive makeup item I own. Anyway guys, I have talked your ear off. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking that button down below. And usually I try to upload every other day, every even day. So I upload the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, you know how to count, right? So every other day and uh, yeah, don't forget to check out some of my other videos and thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.